is tall, dark, and handsome. And instead of showing us one of his talents, he's going to explain why he thinks he should be the next Mr. RHS. So everybody get excited to Spencer Castle on his own! It takes three things to be Mr. RHS, and let's get started. Thing number one. You have to have swag. Which you can clearly see I have. Excess of. You need to be popular and you need to be cool. But what makes popular exactly? Let's stop and think. Well, popular is basically all about who you know. If you know the right people, you can go to the right places and do the right things. So, all I have to say is, I know the right people. <laughs> this is me and my best friend. <laughs> well, names aren't important. <laughs> David Hasselhoff. You know him. Come on. I just hang out with people that famous, that handsome, that tan, and who run in slow motion. <laughs> we hang out in my house all the time. Whatever, no big deal. But I don't just know him. I mean, of course not. That wouldn't make me popular. But I can tell you that I am so popular and so filled with swag that I even do royal ceremonies requested by royal families. <laughs> speaks for itself. <laughs> this is me at the Academy Awards. Of course I got invited. That's my favorite dress, by the way. And Angelina Jolie kept doing the same pose that I did all night long. I can't help it. I'm a trendsetter. What are you going to do? Now, looking upon this picture, I'm sure all of you have two questions in your head right now, and I know the answer to both of them. So, number one, no, I did not wax my chest. Not after last year. <laughs> and number two, pink cotton thong. <laughs> Sports. Like half the people up there are probably from Kenya. And I'm still racing them. Yeah. This is me making the Kessler run in under five parsecs. That's right, I raced the Millennium Falcon. But, hey, calm down. But, I wasn't always this good. It took a lot of practice and a lot of hard work, and trust me, I started at the bottom. When I started out, nobody told me there was a difference between the high jump and the hurdle. So halfway through my backflip over the hurdle, I was looking at all the other people and I was like, ah, you guys are doing it wrong. But then I woke up in the ER and everyone told me that I was doing it wrong. When 
like, what? I got it right after that. This is me in a race, obviously. I'm tied for first. That guy, probably also from Kenya. <laughs> Things are starting to go poorly. Not too bad, but you know, heart palpitations. They happen. It's a thing. But you know, nothing I can't recover from. Okay. Now I'm back with the lady runners. That's not good. But you know, I can still make it back to the front. Good God. Well, they're slow. I can catch up. Oh, that's me weeping. That's me vomiting. That's me weeping again. Well, I'll have you know I took a modest seventh place in this race. Well, okay, not really, but when the emergency team was wheeling me off in the gurney, I crossed the finish line, so, aha! <laughs> Who's the loser now? <laughs> Not me. Thing number three. You need to be good with the ladies if you want to be Mr. RHS. <laughs> slides and pictures could show how great I am with the ladies, so I thought a story was the best I could do. So let me tell you a tale, I'll paint you with my imagination brush. It all started with my mom, who works in New York, and one day, I was, as the loving son I am, I was going to pay her a visit. So I went down to New York, and I started taking the subway, and I was listening to my iPod. Anybody... Oh, sorry, I messed up. That happens! I was listening to my iPod, which happens to have a lot of comedy on it. I like comedy, I like making people laugh. Anybody who listens to anything funny on their iPod knows that when you hear something funny, you laugh, uh, obviously. But if you're listening to it on your iPod, and there happen to be other people in the room, then it just seems like you're laughing for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> so everyone tries to hold in the laugh, which results in a phenomenon I like to call the creeper smile. <laughs> Which looks a little something like this. <laughs> I am timed, alright? Time. So a lot of you are probably thinking right about now, oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> no. You do not know where it's going. So I take my seat in the subway, and anyone who rides the subway knows that there is not much difference between the feeling of a cold subway seat and the feeling of a wet subway seat. <laughs> so I do what any natural person would do, and I lean a little bit forward, and I place my hand upon my firm buttock, <laughs> and I check to see if there's anything there that's wet. And while I'm leaning forward, I must have heard the most hilarious thing in the world because I let go of the biggest creeper smile in the universe. And sitting across from me were two of the finest looking New York ladies I have ever seen. So there I was, bent forward, hand upon my butt, <laughs> creeper smiling. <laughs> Most men in this situation do the natural thing of getting up and leaving. <laughs> Not I. I made a mistake. I made eye contact. <laughs> and at that point it became a competition. To see who would lose first. Me breaking eye contact or them and calling the police. <laughs> I won. <laughs> For anyone who's wondering, yes, the seat was wet. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I've been Spencer Castle.